Yeah, I and uh, the, his opponent is playing a Naya Wolfren ramp deck. Um, not the traditional Wolfram ramp deck. He's playing white for Elishnorn. I think it's just green white ramp, actually. It's not Naya. He's only playing red for the Wolfrons. Okay, yeah. So he's a green white Wolfram deck. Uh, saying, you know, I can live without um, Inferno Titans and uh, my mana can be a little worse than normal. I'm going to trade in my Whip Flares, my Slag Storms, and my Inferno Titans. I'm going to pick up Day of Judgments, Timely Reinforcements, Gideon Jura, and a copy of Elishnorn. Yeah, I like it. And looks like the players are deciding on their openers, and they both keep. So, Dana, turn one, Abazin's Pilgrim. Come on, Pilgrim. Oh, look at that. Can anybody get that Pixies reference? Double <laughs> Abs and Pilgrim on the board. That card looks a lot like an Inferno tie in, in Michael's hand, but. It does, you're right. He doesn't have an Inferno tie in on his deck list, so. So, Mulch from Dana. I think it's a three for one off that mulch. That's, yeah, that was a heck you know, of a kind mulch. Of <laughs> insane. He's gonna actually probably gonna have to discard here on his end step. Dumped a uh, Birds of Paradise into the, into the graveyard. His hand is super, super land heavy at this point. All right, so M Michael plays a second Copper Line Gorge and a Birds of Paradise. Mm hmm. Continuing to ramp his mana up a bit. Dana does not miss his land drop. <laughs> not with the, you know, six lands he's got in his hand. Um, I'm exaggerating. So, uh, Lingering Souls okay. from Dana. Got Spirit Spirit Pilgrim for Dana to Michael Tabler's uh, Birds of Paradise and Abyssin Pilgrim. And this that really looks like Inferno Titan. Are we? This is oh we have the we have the players mixed up. That's yeah, I think it. that must be it, yeah. Um, the, but I, I think this might just be a wrong deck list. Oh, wait a sec. Yeah, because there's no Inferno Titan in this list either. And this this deck doesn't have I was in Spilgrim. Yeah, we must have the wrong deck lists. Uh, but either way, I guess we'll watch the game here. <laughs> and um, it must be this this deck on the left does not at all look like either of these deck lists. So Inferno yeah, it's Titan. It's another Freed's deck. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. We had a wrong deck list for, uh, for Michael here. Well, Inferno Titan comes down for Michael, wipes mm -hmm. Dana's side of the board. And that's going to be really hard for uh, for Dana to get back into the game afterward because you know Inferno Titan really goody when your opponent is doing things like you know just one toughness stuff. I also think is it possible that Dana's on the left and Michael's on the right because we're seeing well but that, that doesn't make sense either. No. No, no. I'm both. just oh there's red mana. Okay, I didn't see any red mana on Dana's side of the board. I'm like it seems kind of odd. Okay, Birds of Paradise flashback lingering souls. Dana trying to rebuild his board. Uh, that's gonna be... I don't know, that's... that's it's a just tall order, because yeah. Michael, you know, just attacks with an Inferno Titan, and again, and wipes Dana's board, yeah. and then this very turn, not only is he doing that, but, oh, that's an, an interesting attack from Michael, because, uh, you know, if he didn't attack in that way, he would have been able to cast a Worm Coil Engine this turn. But, uh, he must have something else that, uh... Oh, no, he's just gonna pump this Inferno Titan up. Uh, get him for 10 damage, and uh, just not going to show his opponent that he has Worm Pearl Engines in his deck. That's fine. Yeah, no need at this point. And uh, there, Dana draws the uh, said Crater Hook Behemoth and uh, packs it in, ready for a game two. That's a quick game one for Michael. Inferno Titan taking that game over very quickly. Jesse investigating the deck list situation. So just to uh, let you guys in on what, what we know here. Michael has, uh, well, his deck list is filled out as David Tabler, but it says goes by Michael on top. So 
we're, this is where the confusion is because maybe we maybe. have someone, we do have David Tabler's deck list, but Michael Tabler is playing something different. Yes. Uh, he is playing Freets, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's clearly a Freets deck. He cast Faithful Sluting into Unburial Rites into Inferno Titan. So, uh, so it is a Freets archetype kind of mirror, but mm -hmm. completely different takes on, on them. I think it's crazy that people are playing Crater Hoof Behemoth. I, I, not, not in a bad way. <laughs> I love me some Crater Hoof Behemoth. That guy is big. Makes craters with his hoops. All right, correct deck list. Actually says Michael Tabler in the uh, first yes. name slot. And he and this is looks much playing, more... uh, he is playing Freaks. He has Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight in his deck. That's spicy, I like it. Yes. Yeah, so. He's got three Tybalt's in the deck, I love it. Oh, I he's playing it. Tybalt. I love it, yeah, I mean, why not uh, discard cards that I want to reanimate anyway or flashback? He's I not playing it. Tracker's Instincts. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. He's playing Mulch, but... He's playing Tybalt over Tracker's Instincts. It's, it's, man, Tybalt's hard to cast in this deck, isn't so, it? So, he obviously got a, uh, a look at Dana's uh, ramping capabilities, but nothing, you know, nothing really big. But he can clearly, I think, feel safe bringing in some Zealous Conscripts. I think that's uh, that's likely. So Michael has Gisela conscripts. He has another Gisela. Gisela. I don't know. Is some purify the graves. He's got a gristle brand. Yeah. So uh, it's funny how the uh, the guys. Okay, and Dana does not have graveyard hate. Um, so purify the grave. The card that's really good against freaks. Mm -hmm. um, Another card, like get Graph Figure's Cage, also really good against Freets. Those are cards that you rarely see in sideboards these days, giving Freets kind of an opening to come in and do really well. But the sideboards that usually have them are the Freets players, because they know how good their own deck is. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, if I if I face against another guy that's playing this, I want to be able to deal with it. Yeah. And now uh, Michael also has an increasing savagery in his sideboard. Yeah. Uh, a really, really good card against these red decks that are going around, these green-red aggro decks, white-red aggro decks. Um, he's got all these birds and elves and things like that in his deck that really not that impressive. They can kind of get killed by removal spells, but if his opponent taps out, magically one of those things just becomes a 6-6 six, six or a 5-6 flyer. Yeah. And it just becomes really hard for his opponent to deal with that. When you're playing against a ramp opponent and you just make a 5-6 bird of paradise on turn three, they probably lose. <laughs> Or when you just equip your Bird of Paradise with Sword of War and Peace, <laughs> that'll kill him too. That's true. That's, a, that's more a Brian Kowal iteration of the deck. And you know, that might actually not be a bad sideboard plan for these Freight decks if people start bringing in a lot of Graveyard Gates. Just have a yeah. bunch of swords, you yeah, know? You're playing your... Mana Guys, you're playing Lingering Souls. Those cards work really well with swords. Yeah, but it's funny because at this point, like you said, nobody's really playing Graveyard 8 besides the Graveyard decks, you know, the decks that are, they're very aware of themselves, so. Yeah, Michael Tabler, again, with Tybalt over Tracker's Instincts, and that's really, really rough on his mana. I mean, he has Birds of Paradise, he has Copper Line Gorge, and he has Black Leaf Cliffs, but that's dangerous, man. Yeah, I don't know. Uh... <laughs> I don't know that I agree with it, but I like it. So yeah. <laughs> I'll say that much. I would love to for this match to end with, uh, you know, I would love by the end of this match to go, yeah, I can see why he put Tybalt in there. <laughs> that would be exciting. Dana has uh, a worm coil. He's got Bonfire of the Damned in there. He's got... Thrawn, Timely Reinforcements, Huntmaster, Ancient Grudge, and Sever the Bloodline, so. Yeah, Bonfire, actually pretty good in this mirror. Uh, you know, it kills all their mana guys and their Lingering Souls tokens for three mana. So if, you know, if it's if it's pre and burial rights, a lot of the time you get a three mana, three mana Plague Wind. That's not really fair. Yeah. I'm not sure if Dana sided in that, uh, this Bonfire stuff. Dana gonna go ahead and mulligan down to uh, six cards. Let's see yeah. if Michael uh, just to keep this one. 
Michael's hand not very exciting either. I wouldn't be surprised if we sent this one back. It looks like it's just a couple of mana guys, a mulch, and then five la or four lands. <laughs> yeah, she chooses to mull again. Yeah. She just can't do it. Or maybe he's not mulliganing. Maybe he's keeping that. Yeah, he's not. Doesn't seem to be. It looked like he was like, yeah, and I'm like, you know, he kind of made some Man, motions. That's, that's dangerous. But then it stopped. Yeah. Maybe he's feeling it. I think it's that you know you, when you're up a game, you kind of feel a little safer, but I don't think you should let that uh, affect your your decision as much. Yeah, it looks like he kept. Forest birds for Dana. Good turn one play from Dana. Birds, really important a matchup like this where your mana, not necessarily the best. Remember, Michael has a Birds of Paradise of his own. Let's see what uh, Dana can come up with here. It's planes for turn two, gonna tap those two and mulch away. I think we might see the same turn on uh, Michael's. Ooh, land, chance. land, land, and looting. That That's a really a good one heck again. Of a mulch. Yeah. I mean, this deck mulches pretty well. Three lands and a flashback spell. Seems good. That seems really good. All right, so Michael Tabler. Uh, gonna untap here and probably mulch himself. Yep, gonna go yep. ahead and mulch and let's see what he finds. He only finds one land. He, however, flips multiple Faithless Linings into his yard, so not the end of the world. Places that card and finds two flashback Faithless Looting effects. Pretty good. Razor Verge Thicket, and he's got an Avacyn's Pilgrim. All right, Dana this turn. Let's see if he chooses to fl flashback that... Uh, Faithless looting, or if he has something else in store. And goes with uh, Black Cleave Cliffs. Is that a Lingering Souls in his hand? Is that his thing? I think so, about? yeah. Yeah, there it he is. He chooses to just hard cast Lingering Souls instead of uh, flashing back that Faithless looting. Pass it back. With Does he have a Gavity Township in hand? That could explain this. Didn't see it. Try another mulch another for Michael. Mulch, yeah. Try another mulch of that. Able and to get uh, three lands and uh, puts a Zealous Conscripts into his yard. Zealous Conscripts pretty awesome in the Freed's Mirror. Yeah, as soon as there's something uh, something powerful on the other side of the board, we could see uh, an Unburial Rites just for the Conscripts. Remember, uh, casting Zealous Conscripts on Elishnorn also, you know, you, you wipe your opponent's board of all the tokens and mana guys that they have, and the Zealous Conscripts and the Elishnorn are going to get in the red zone for 9 damage, and yeah. a lot of times it's just enough to close the game. There is Tybalt. All right. All right, Tybalt, uh, going upstairs, and he's going to yeah. draw a card. Let's see what he finds. Yeah, it doesn't look at what the card was. You're, uh, a lot of time... Seven cards, you run the time you just roll a uh, ten sided dice, and uh, you know, if it's eight, nine, or ten, you just re roll it. Yeah. And otherwise, that's the card you take. Let's see how they're going to randomize this. Maybe Dana just picks one. Five. It's a forest. I Not think Michael's fine with that. Yeah, Michael is very happy with getting that far, especially after he mulched into three lands the previous turn, or this turn. Yeah. That was just turn three, and he played a spell and a planeswalker. <laughs> yeah. You know? On turn three. He drew three cards and played a planeswalker, so actually, you know, drew four, but he had a randomly discard one, so. Elish Norn. Uh, looks like uh, Dana's flashing back the Faithful Student. Draws Elish Norn. Oh no, don't discard that. Oh no. 
What, what did he discard? Elishnorn? He discarded Elishnorn. I mean, he's going to cast that in two turns. He's the mana to do it, and he doesn't have an Unburial Rites yet. Couldn't quite see his hand. Maybe he's got another right. uh, another oh. Elishnorn. Is that All possible? Right. Oh, well, he flipped into the mulch, so... Oh, he flipped into double, uh, <laughs> double Unburial Rites. So it ended up working out pretty well for Dana. Yeah. And so the, the mulch... I guess I'm crazy. <laughs> well, maybe he just playing uh, playing a little loose. That's all. He's just like, I have faith in my deck. I'll hit an Unburial Rage or two on this mulch. So Dana reading Tybalt's trying to figure out, should I be attacking this? I don't, you know. Do I attack my opponent or do I attack yeah. Tybalt? What do I do? So he's attacking... It looks like Michael. Attacking Michael. Ah, that's... I mean, I don't know how relevant Michael's life total really is. I think this is just an Elshnorn game, right? Yeah, I think I would have attacked Tybalt. Alright. So, Michael, uh, gonna make that Tybalt go upstairs again. And again, the random discards. Forest. Um, all right. So I have a feeling Dana may be attacking that Tybalt next turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or somehow affecting it. Well, next turn, I mean, you can just kill it because he's gonna have Elishnorn. Yeah, it's true. All right, so Michael plays a land, passes back. Dana untaps. Yep. So now Dana's gonna get going to get to uh, this turn, flashback Lingering Souls, and make an Elshnorn. Unless Michael plays a Counterspell. What is wrong Tell with these people will. not playing Counterspells? Oh, a Purify the Grave. Purify the Grave on Elshnorn. Oh, Unburial Rites. Nothing? Is there nothing there? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, he he can't. He already targeted the Elshnorn. Oh, oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah, it's, it got it's, countered it's by the target, Purify the yeah. Grave. Going to flash back that lingering souls, make a few more one ones. Yeah, you made black mana with Birds of Paradise. <laughs> He's like, oh, you need an extra mana. Are you sure sure about that? Yeah. So uh, Tybalt still gonna gonna take a hit, but he is sticking around at least for now. Yeah. Now because he chose to attack Michael instead of attacking Tybalt that turn before, he's actually gonna have to do an extra point to Tybalt now. Yeah. And Michael has an Elish Norn of his own. Wipes out Dana's side of the board. Tybalt goes up one. Random discard here. And uh, they hit a four. One. Now they're going from the opposite side. <laughs> they started yeah, counting they, they from started, opposite sides. That's what I was saying about the, the first one and the second one. Yeah, it was Like weird. he counted from the left and then he counted from the right. And he counted from the right again, so it's not a big deal. But I thought it was a little weird that he counted from the left and then to the right and hit a yeah. forest both times. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. All right, sever the bloodline from Dana on the Elish Norn, but... Uh, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, that, uh, it's a nice answer, although Michael's uh, Elish Norn did do quite a bit of damage. And Dana has to find something, Tybalt's going to go up to four again. Hit an Avacyn's Pilgrim on the uh, random discard last time. Yeah, so far, only hit cards that are pretty irrelevant. And, yeah. you know, it's drawn him... How many cards now? Four, three. three. Three, I think three. three. Right, because it was far as far as Avacyn's Pilgrim with the, yeah. with the discards. Yeah, so now he's going to get a fourth card off of this turn. Probably going to cast some... Terribly large fatty beforehand. Uh, 
Does he have like a, he has a worm coil I engine see, in hand? Yeah, he's got a worm coil. He's got another Tybalt in hand. He's got a birds in hand. Um, he, I think he's trying to decide, do I just want a worm coil? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would do. I would do. Go ahead and worm coil, then draw the card off Tybalt. Because if you just dis draw like an Avacyn's Pilgrim and discard the worm coil, you're going to be kicking yourself. Yeah. So, uh... Looks like a flashback, uh, Purify the Grave on the Seventh Bloodline. And now Tybalt draws him a card. Four, and it's Tybalt, so... Again, not a card. It was a, a, a effectively dead card right now, so... I think Dana may be uh, feeling a sudden impact if he can't... Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he... Michael even wants to send impact. I think he just keeps plusing the tempo. Yeah, he's actually doing great with just the plus. Yeah. All right. Front side lingering souls from Dana. And maybe this is the perfect home for Tibble because it, uh... Because you're fine with what you're discarding. Yeah. You're yeah, discarding and I mean, you're, fine, you're fine, fine with discarding stuff. And the Freed deck has generally just been insane against creature decks. And it's just bad against control decks, and Tybalt's really good against control decks. Yeah. So, maybe Tybalt has found a home in Freets. It's really hard to cast, though. So Dana uh, cast the front side and the back side of that Lingering Soul, so he's got four spirits. He's also added a second Bird of Paradise to the board. That is the Biobox Bird of Paradise. I love that one. Therese Nielsen artwork. I just don't like foils, so... I don't, don't play with it. <laughs> I did get some and then traded them away. Because I was just like, I'm not playing with these. I'm not, I don't like foils. It's unfortunate, all these cool alternate art cards that come out in foil. All right, Michael Taylor make... drawing two cards from that phase loop. Let's see what he decides to discard. Make some non-foil versions, too. This card's a couple of lands. Play a land. Shimmering Grotto. Sever the bloodline on your spirit. Oh, pretty good. So, uh, one card for one card. Although Dana had to pay five mana and Michael only had to pay four. And there were seven. Michael going up to 24 now. This is a pretty cool match. Yeah. I like this. All right, so he casts Bird of Paradise and now plus ones. I'm surprised he cast the bird. I would have been like, yeah, forget the bird. You know what I mean? And he discards Lingering Souls. Yeah. I would have left the bird in my hand. You know? Make Tybalt possibly hit the bird. That's fine. What does Dana have? He just top decked a Bonfire of the Damned. It's a it's miracle! A miracle. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to kill Tybalt and kill all of Michael's creatures and just leave him with a couple of free threes. Um, he could have killed Tybalt earlier, so now he's not going to be able to dome Michael with this, but not really a big deal. So he did side in that bonfire? Apparently so, unless he just pulled it yeah, out of see, his sleeve. Like, so. I mean, bonfire's pretty good. Yeah, clear the board. Uh, and some some guys. Some Meowth and a, uh, a Pokeball. Somebody get some Yo MTG Taps tokens in there. Yeah. Uh, Meowth, you know. Going not, to, not a uh, fan of those tokens. The thing is, though, Michael still has um, quite the force on that table. You know, that's eight points of attacking power that Gavin Town should be as an hand. Yeah, he's uh, he's still in good shape. Dana needed a miracle to stay in the game and. Uh, but he he counts still... his lands. So that's not a good sign for Dana. Plays a forest. Does he have anything in his hand? Yeah, I think he's just figuring out what he needs to tap for Gavany Township. Yeah. Yeah. Getting in for eight. Dana's falling to five here. Lingering Souls flashback from Michael. 
Yeah, she probably should have flashed back that lingering souls before he activated the Gavany Township. Doesn't really make that big of a difference, but but yeah, you know, just. Dana has a miracle. I mean, Dana, Dana has a Gavany Township yeah. is what I meant to say. He needs a miracle. <laughs> he needs a miracle. My brain was thinking what what I was, you know, hoping for him to draw and not what he actually drew. Sever the bloodline, and uh, that'll yep. sever the uh, the match for Dana. Yeah, Michael Taylor able to take that one down rather quickly. Threw a miracle too. Yeah. And opposed Threw a, a big bonfire so was... down. At that point, the game was already in a spot, and he also had Worm Coil, who's mm -hmm. particularly resistant to that. He's yeah. like the one threat that, you know, how do you have a Titan or an Elshnorn on the table? It, yeah. The, that miracle would have been significantly stronger. Right. 